Hey, Angie here for MyNextTablet.com. Today with a couple of tips and tricks for the new Samsung Galaxy Tab S3. If you want to watch a review of this tablet, I've got one up on the channel already, as well as a video about the keyboard and a couple of S Pen features show. So this is just a yeah, couple of tips and tricks if you bought the Galaxy Tab S3 and want to get around with this tablet a bit easier. This video is mainly for people who did not own a Galaxy Note device from Samsung before or any other tablet with an S Pen like the Galaxy Tab A10.1 with S Pen. And yeah, if you owned one already, then you're pretty familiar with all of the features here because they didn't change much. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now let's get into a couple of tips and tricks. We start with the S Pen stylus first. This one is included with the Galaxy Tab S3. And yeah, you've got, got a couple of interesting features what you can do with this stylus. First of all, what you probably figured out already, there's the Samsung Notes app and in that one you can take a couple of notes or do some drawing and so on. I'm sure you figured that out already, but there are a couple of interesting features that are not always as easy to find. We are starting with the so-called air command. They've been part of the S Pen features for many years now, probably since the Note 2 or Note 3. What happens is if you hover over the display, this little icon appears. You can also just hover over it and press the button here on the stylus and then the air commands pop up. And the air commands let you do a couple of things. For example, you can create a new note and that's just a new note in the Samsung Notes app. Nothing special there. Another feature is um, just the view all notes button here and then you, you probably have to close this one first and then go into view all notes and then you see all the notes that you've taken previously inside the Samsung Notes apps. What's quite interesting though is the next feature that's called Smart Select and with this one you can select something on your screen. I'm just doing it on the home screen now. Obviously it will be more interesting if you're doing it somewhere else on a PDF or something. With this one you can just um, yeah, take a screen grab of a specific thing, not the whole screen, and then you can save it as a picture or send it to somebody or draw on it. Or what's interesting as well is you can extract the text and you can see here it ex extracted the text from the icons like room, calendar and so on. And now you can copy that and then you can actually go to your notes app for example, start a new note or wherever you are and then you can just go to the text modus and let's see, yeah, there we go. Let's paste this text here and now you've extracted the text from the home screen or from the PDF or whatever you're doing into your notes app or Word or whatever. Another interesting feature is the screen writes. That's been part of the note series since the first Galaxy Note that was introduced many years ago now. It basically just takes a screenshot and then you can write on the screenshot and say this is whatever important or something and that you can do in any app, in the Maps app or on the browser or wherever and then you can just save it as a picture. You can crop it or just share it directly with your friends or co-worker or something. Another feature and that's maybe the most interesting, it depends on what you're doing though, is the translation feature. Um, with this one, let's quickly open up the Chrome browser with this one you can translate text. For example, I'm on my German site now and then we can ex uh, translate this text, for example. What does this mean? Oh, it means pre-order. Vorbestellte Bart means pre-order. Good to know. What does this mean? Innovations. Interesting to see. Um, you can change the languages. For example, if you're on a Chinese website, maybe looking for some leaks, then you can change it to Chinese. I hope they have Chinese. Maybe they don't, which would be kind of sad. All right, we don't have Chinese in here, but maybe another Spanish or whatever. And then you can just translate it into English. As we are seeing here, not all languages are included, but a lot. Turkish, uh, Malay, Italian, Finnish, and so on. And then you can just translate any text very easily. Obviously, you can use the um, Google Translation app as well, but this is a quick way to do it and especially translate small words. Let's go into the settings and just see in a couple of other features here. Inside the air commands, we can go to shortcuts 
and then we can edit which apps appear if you press this button or press on here. Okay, it's not working while you're in these settings. Anyway, you know what I mean. Um, let's ed edit that. For example, we can add a couple of specific S Pen feature functions. Let's just drag them in here. And if you want to put any other app as a shortcut in there, for example, let's just say the Words app, you can do that as well. And then let's exit it, open the air commands again, and then we've got a whole array of apps here and features that we can use. Let's take a look at the S Pen specific features. This one is called Magnify, and it basically does what you expect from a feature that's called Magnify. It magnifies your text, so you can magnify stuff for several percent, from 150 to 300 percent. That's quite interesting if you don't have good eyesight or something or want to inspect this uh, picture more thoroughly. Another very interesting feature is called Glance. And for that, I will quickly go into the browser. Um, just for an example, let's just open up something here and then open up the air commands and choose Glance. Now, with Glance, let's go into Word. I will just show you a quick example. Let's say we are editing a text. I'm writing the review of the Galaxy Tab S3, for example. And I want to know, hmm, what did I write on my German review? Well, I pressed the Glance button in the browser earlier from my German review of the Galaxy Tab S3. And if we hover over here, I can glance at it and then continue writing on my Word document. And maybe I forgot something. Let's glance at it again. And yeah, now I can see it and then we can write again. That's certainly a very interesting feature. If you want to close it, you just drag it and go to remove. And that is the glance feature inside the air commands. It certainly um, could be very useful depending on what you're doing. Let's go into the settings of the S Pen stylus. So we go to the settings and we go over here, advanced features, and there we go to S Pen. And you can do a couple of things there. For example, turn on or turn off air view. And that's um, pretty useful for a couple of things. I will show you one feature in the gallery. For example, with air view turned on, you just hover over something and then it expands, like here in the gallery. You can do the same in the calendar and other apps that support it. That could be quite useful. Just let it turn on. And I believe it's turned on by default anyway. Let's go back to our settings over here. Another feature that's very useful is direct pen input. For example, let's say we are in the browser again and we want to change the website. Then we have direct pen input. If you hover over a text field like here, you press this button here and then you are directly put towards the handwriting recognition thing and then you can put in my next tablet, and so on. Oh, he didn't recognize it completely, but you get what I mean. That's a direct text input. So if you want to use that feature, then just leave it turned on. Another one is the pointer. That just basically means if you got it turned on, it's turned on by default. You see a little pointer there wherever you're hovering with the S Pen. And that's pretty useful to see. If you don't want that for some reason, then you can just turn it off. Another interesting feature is screen of memo, and I will demonstrate that very quickly. It's turned on by default. If you have your tablet turned off, you're sitting in a meeting and are thinking, oh, there's something very interesting going on. I need to take a note very fast. Then you can just press this button here and touch the display, and then you can immediately start to take your notes without unlocking the display at all. Without unlocking the tablet, you can just start to take some notes and then save it directly inside the Samsung Notes app, and then you can unlock it and take a look at it inside the Samsung Notes app. Let's go back to the settings, and that's pretty much it. What's interesting, there's also S Pen sound. If you're writing the Notes app, then it might make a sound like you're writing with a pencil or something. Um, that's certainly maybe useful or gives you a better illusion, but you can turn it off or turn it on, um, whatever you want to do. All right, um, let's take a look at the handwriting recognition. As I said, we've got this 
protocol direct pen input turned on. But that feature, interestingly or sadly, does not work everywhere. For example, I'm in Microsoft Word here right now, and as you can see, nothing happens. The text input feature just doesn't work here. The same, it doesn't work on some comments. If you're on a website, the comment field somehow that doesn't pop up. But if you still want to do handwriting recognition, you just press this. Now you press on this button and then go to handwriting and then you can do just your normal handwriting. This is a test and it converts it into a real test. And you can see your whole document there up there popping up. You can just delete what you wrote and you can go back here and maybe delete this. So that works very nice. If you just want to do handwriting, you can edit whole documents with this and that works pretty nicely. All right, that are the S Pen features that I want to show you um, in this video. And that's pretty much it. That's all the important features that you might want to know. Yeah, these are basically the S Pen features that I wanted to show you. And uh, maybe you've known them already, but if you never played with a Galaxy Note device before, then you probably haven't used them yet and now you know what you can do with them. So let's take a look at a couple of other features that are included with the Galaxy Tab S3 tablet. For that, we go into the settings. Um, we go to lock screen and security. And there you can learn how to add your fingerprint reader that's integrated into the home button so that you can unlock the device very fast. To use that feature, you need to put in a PIN or another um, secure device, a password PIN or something to unlock it. If you don't have a fingerprint on you or something, um, anyway, you need to set that up. And then you go to fingerprints and then you need to enter your PIN, click continue, and then you can add a fingerprint over here. And then basically the app, the tablet here guides you on what you need to do. You just need to lift your finger on here and yeah, goes over and over again. And then your fingerprint is added. We don't need to do that. I already added, added it, my fingerprint. And then you can just turn off your device and just press on here and the tablet is unlocked. That's the fingerprint uh, features. Let's quickly go back there. What you can also do is activate web sign in. Then you can just sign into a website with your fingerprint reader that can be useful as well, and you can, if you don't want anybody or yourself to unlock the device with your fingerprint, then you can just turn it off here. But I don't know why you would use the fingerprint reader without having that feature activated. Another feature that's integrated into the software of the Galaxy Tab S3 is Flipboard. It's a pretty nice um, reading app. I don't use it though, and I'm not a huge fan of it. If you want to deactivate it, then it's very easy. Actually, you just go back into the settings, go to display, then go to home screen, and then you can just disable this briefing here. And then if you go back home, there's no Flipboard anymore. Another very useful feature is the multi-window feature. For example, mm, let's go into Word. And let's say I'm writing something, but I also want to look at my browser because I've got a couple of notes there or I found some, something that's very interesting, then you can use two apps side by side. You can type here and do whatever, some typing. And at the same time, if you close the keyboard again, let's close it here. Um, then you can read your notes and read something here, read something here. That's mostly useful, for example, if you do what I'm doing here or if you're watching a video, maybe on YouTube or something and are chatting with your friends and hangouts or whatever underneath. That's very interesting, this multi-window feature, this split screen, split screen feature. It actually has been a part of the Samsung Touch with UI for a long time now, but now pretty much every device that has Android Nougat can use it because it's integrated right into the operating system. Another very useful feature is the guest account. That's part of Android. If you click on here on this icon here, then you can switch to a guest or just add a new user, maybe a family member or a friend. But let's say you're at a meeting and a colleague asks you 
if you can use your tablet just for a bit, just to browse around, but you've got important data on here or maybe pictures that you don't want anybody to see, then you can just go into the guest mode and head off, give the tablet to your colleague and then he can use it, he can browse the web or whatever he would want to do with the tablet. And yeah, then he has no access to your pictures, for example, it's basically just the standard interface, um, standard data that's pre-installed like all the apps. He can use the Chrome browser, but he does not have your history. For example, as you can see here, you have to just accept everything new, start everything fresh. And if he's done, you can just close everything up and go back to your account that he does not ac have access to because you need your fingerprint or your pin to go back into your account. So that's a very safe way if you are giving the tablet just for a while to a friend or to a colleague or something. And yeah, that's just how you can do it to save, to protect your data, your pictures and whatever. Another very useful feature is the power saving mode. And to activate that, we just go into settings. Then we go into device maintenance, battery, and then you can see some stats about your battery life and which apps use how much power. But what's most interesting about this setting here is the power saving mode here. If you don't have a lot of battery left, then you can choose the mid power saving mode. Or what's more interesting, what gives you even more battery life is the maximum power saving mode. And we just apply that right now. What this does, it turns down the screen brightness a bit. It adds a bit more contrast. Everything here is mostly black and that does not use any power with the Super AMOLED display that we have um, here in this Galaxy Tab S3. So it uses way less power. It also limits background data and uh, reduces the CPU speed. But what that means though is that you cannot use every app anymore. For example, you can't use any game anymore, just not in this mode, but you have access to the browser still and for example to Hangouts if you want to stay in touch with some friends or whatever app you have installed, but not games or other um, very heavy apps. You just don't have any access to them in this maximum power saving mode, but what it does, it um, gives you in this case a battery life of over 100 hours at only 66%. Obviously it's still um, matters how you use it. If you then add YouTube here and watch YouTube, then obviously the battery life won't be as long. But that is an easy way if the battery life goes to 10%, but you need to stay in contact with your friends, for example, over Hangout or with your family, then you can just do that and um, yeah, have a longer battery life without having any background data, without having the CPU clock speed go very high and so on. So it's very useful to maximize uh, battery life if you really need it. That's the maximum power saving mode. Another feature that I want to show you, it's very um, simple. It's how you take a screenshot on a Samsung device. You can do it several ways. You can press the power button and the home button and then we have a screenshot there. You can also use the air commands. I showed you before just press screen right and then a screenshot is basically taken. You can just save it or it's already saved. Another feature though is you swipe with your palm like this and then another screenshot like here is taken and you can still draw on it. Now are we in the drawing mode? Ah, no, we are in the drawing mode. You can just draw on it. So that's just another way to take a screenshot just with your palm like this and then a screenshot is taken and you can do it over and over again. Um, interestingly, this is one of the most searched keywords, how to take a screenshot with your device. All right, something else that might be useful is the blue light filter that's integrated into most devices right now, most phones, most tablets. You just go into the settings to display and then to the blue light filter, you can just go back here, let's just turn it on and then the blue light is filtered out and that supposedly should make you sleep better if you're reading something at night before going to bed. And then maybe you want to turn on the blue light filter. You can also um, make it turn on automatically in the settings here. You can turn on as a schedule and then just schedule it. 
All right, these are a couple of tips and tricks with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S3. If you have any questions, just write them in the comments. And if you bought this tablet, just go further into the settings. There are a lot more things you can turn on or turn off. Um, but these are the most interesting and the most useful. I'm NJ. Thanks for watching. Wow. 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 Wow.